episode 336. Then we had the unveiling, and 40 of the 90 women who were involved in this truck came out for the unveiling, and many of them hadn't seen it completed yet because they'd been involved earlier. And it was just so emotional and joyous and overwhelming. Um, It was just a phenomenal, phenomenal experience, and it was so well received by the industry. Welcome, aftermarketers, to Remarkable Results Radio. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Welcome, aftermarketers, throughout North America and around the world. Carm Capriato here with a unique interview done on the road at the Buffalo, New York Autorama with Bogey Latiner, who was showing off the 57 Chevy Montage all-female build. Now, I found a real cool place to do the interview inside the cab of this awesome vehicle. Hey, thanks to Federal Mogul Motor Parts for making this interview with Bogey possible. And when you need to search for parts, get the latest technical updates or sign up for some Garage Rewards loyalty program swag for tax and shops. Go to fmmotorparts.com. Hey, do you enjoy listening to the podcast on your favorite listening app? Well, so glad to have you as a subscriber. If you're listening on a desktop and you want to be mobile, it's so easy. The podcast appears on over 12 subscription services, but even easier is my own app for iOS or Android. Simply go to your app store and search for Remarkable Results Radio, install, and never miss an episode. Hey, the network of listeners builds each week, and I'm honored, as always, to make so many connections like new Facebook friends Polly Faree Rupp, Tom Hall, Michelle Mitzi Nelson, David Lewis, and Jay Malinowski, and my latest LinkedIn connections Philip Jones, Michael Bradbury from Down Under, and Don Cornett. Get connected with the podcast at remarkableresults.biz slash social. Now enjoy a conversation with Bogey Latiner. Bogey and I met in my hometown of Buffalo, New York at the Autorama this spring, 2018, and I had not seen the final build of the 57 Chevy Montage, so I got a close-up look at the project. We sat inside the cab as a makeshift studio, and I asked Bogey to summarize this all-female project. We talked about the rich reward each woman received while working on the project. Hear about her eight-year-old welder and how many women from all over the country found that they could work in the tough world of the automotive and still be girly at the same time. We talk about the purpose of the build, the next project, and her work with TechForce. Hey, find the show notes for this episode at remarkableresults.biz slash e336 and also find a link to all of Bogey's previous episodes. Now, here's Bogey Latiner on the road with the 57 Chevy Montage. Hey, it's Carm Capriato with Bogula Tyner in the Chevy Montage. I'm actually in Buffalo, New York at the Autorama. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm great. Uh, I see you are on display for the world of Western New York to see this beautiful (laughs) car. Yeah. This is a first time getting the truck out to the East Coast and super excited about it. You know, I didn't get a chance at SEMA. Tell me how marvelous it was to launch this car at at SEMA. SEMA was amazing. It was... You know, the last, I think a lot of people who have built cars or had cars at SEMA know that um, there's that SEMA crunch moment, like right before SEMA happens, all the last minute, hurry up and get it done. And I think there was three nights where we didn't sleep at all. Then we had the unveiling and 40 of the 90 women who were involved in this truck came out for the unveiling. And Many of them hadn't seen it completed yet because they'd been involved earlier. And it was just so emotional and joyous and overwhelming. Um, It was just a phenomenal, phenomenal experience. And it was so well received by the industry. Um, People who I idealize and who I look up to as role models were coming over to tell us how how great a job we'd done and how impressed they were with the project. So just overwhelmingly huge. You said the word emotional. How about for you? Tell me what was going through your mind. <laughs> this build was the, the best, worst thing I've ever done. <laughs> um, last year, building this truck was 
tremendously challenging. Uh, I was pushing myself beyond my own skill set in every way possible, uh, organizing the women, doing things on cars that I'd never done before. I'm a mechanic by trade, all right? I fix broken things. I don't build custom right. trucks. So this was outside of my comfort zone. Uh, it was a lot of work. And there were times where I, I was done. Like, I just didn't want to do anymore. It was torture. It was horrible. And then there were times that it was just the most magical, beautiful, amazing experience ever. Was one of your goals to transfer knowledge or just show somebody here, do this, uh, but you actually explain the why, the what and the how? Yeah. So the whole purpose of this build really was to bring together women in the industry uh, all over the automotive industry. So whether they were fabricators or painters or mechanics or whatever that case may be, uh, bring them together, let them work together and have a chance to meet one another. The other thing was to provide opportunities for women to try out the trades and see if it's something that they liked uh, and really to raise awareness about women in the trades and create a conversation conversation on a national stage about it. And and it has done all of that and more in a way that's way bigger than I even anticipated or hoped for. The seed of the idea. Did you have this truck? Was it just kind of laying around the shop? This was a harebrained idea that I had to do. And I, um, I, I love 57 Chevy pickup trucks. So I went out seeking one okay. and found it. Uh, it was not a good one to pick. It was in horrible condition. <laughs> um, but, uh, and then I had the crazy idea of doing the BMW in it for a lot of different reasons. Wow. But. So for a lot of different reasons, and I love your reason. Because we can. <laughs> because we can. That was that was a big one. I, I think part of the other reason there was, you know, we wanted to raise attention about women in the trades, right? And so what better way to raise attention than to do something slightly controversial? <laughs> you know, BASF was a sponsor. and you oh, guys, phenomenal. Did you guys uh, actually mix your own paints together to find this color? We did. BASF was an amazing partner throughout this whole, whole build process. They really believed in us right from the start. And they had us come out to one of their facilities and we custom mixed... Uh, three colors. We put it out to the fans. We let them vote. They picked this color, uh, this which we have called Tenacious Teal, um, named after uh, the women who worked on the truck. They are tenacious as well. And, um, and it's available through BASF now, so anybody can buy it. Tell me the process of finding the woman and recruiting them from all over uh, many countries, right? Or was it, um, was it just U.S. and it Alaska? It was just U.S. and Alaska, yeah. There wasn't anybody out of the country, although we did have interest. We had a woman from New Zealand calling, I wish I could come out. Um, it was all social media. I mean, I put word out to a handful of people I knew, and then they would post about it, and other people would see it, and it just, it just went we had more interest than we could accommodate. Uh, and really anybody who wanted to come could play, could come and play. And we had to kind of limit the number of newbies. About 30% of the women who worked on the truck had never worked on cars before. We had probably a hundred other newbies that wanted to come out, but we could only have so many newbies at a time with so many experts. So we're going to have to do this again, obviously. There was a lot more interest than we could accommodate. Ooh, wait a minute. We have to do this again. We're going to have to, clearly. <laughs> Tell me about the, the newbies and a lot of the women that were involved. Did they go out and try to seek a career in the automotive because they just got so, in, they loved what they did? You know, it's interesting. We, we've had a number of life-changing stories that happened as a result of this build. Uh, we had one woman who was a production uh, welder. So she was working just on the line as a welder, but she always wanted to work on cars. And so her experience working on the truck, she went home and quit her job and went and got a job in a restoration shop. Um, we had two women who were novices who have since the build is over, they went out and bought their own 56 Chevy pickup truck and they're starting a restoration on that. Uh, we have another woman who's a newbie who's starting a re uh, restoration on a Renault Dolphin. And she was a total noob, had never even used a ratchet before. So a lot of the newbies are coming the hobby side, not necessarily pursuing careers. Some of our pros changed career direction, uh, but we definitely sparked an interest in a lot of people. I'm talking with Jonathan Jacelli, a technical product specialist with Federal Mogul Motor Parts. So Jonathan, how does a service professional get the guru on the go van to their shop? There's a couple ways. We do what we call cold calls where we go around and just visit shops based on uh, geographics. And there's also times where we team up with outside sales reps from other parts distributors and visit the shops on that basis. So I love this. You pull into a shop on a cold call, they see the van, and they're probably excited to see you. Yeah, 
I've had a couple shops where they've actually have already heard of the gurus via Facebook or social media. So when I show up, they've already been signed up and taken online classes. And now that the van's there, it's really easy to book a lunch and learn. So you're really an extension of the Garage Guru Training Centers. Yes, absolutely. So you're all done with your lunch and learn. You spend 45 minutes to an hour. Probably that's all you can really get from a busy, busy shop. What are the technicians saying about your shop visit? Oh, they love it. They thank me, you know, every second I'm walking out the door and just can't wait for me to come back again. Federal Mogul Motor Parks' Garage Gurus is your go-to source for the vehicle training, technology, and answers you need to keep your next job on track. On site, online, or on demand, the gurus are here to help keep your business and your career on the road to success. Visit fmgarageguru.com. You said there's some great stories. Can you tell us just one? Oh, there's just so many. My goodness. Transformational. We interviewed all of the women who were involved in the build, and I to hear what their lessons were and their stories were. And it's it's little things, but big things. Uh, Barbie the welder. Uh, she, She's here. She is here. She was involved uh, with a lot of the early welding on the truck. And she came out for an entire month and had never met anybody else like her. You know, a, a woman who was interested in these things, these crazy building and metal and... And so for her coming out was life changing. She she explains it as we gave her permission uh, to be feminine and know that she could be a badass, pardon my French, and still be girly. She always thought that she had to be the tough girl. Um, in order to succeed in, in a man's world. Okay, so you're here at the Buffalo Autorama, and you're going to be at a ton of these all over yeah. the East Coast here, uh, I would imagine, this next this spring. What feedback are you getting for women who want to join the industry, Bogey? Because this is a movement. It is. It, there's a, there's so much interest. I, we have women coming up to the booth all the time saying they're so excited to see this. They learn to wrench with their dad, or they work on cars, or whatever the case may be. Little girls coming up. They want to be mechanics. Dad's coming up saying they're their daughters watch um, come out into the shop now after seeing All Girls Garage and seeing this project happen. And it's huge. There's a lot, a lot of interest. It's been very well received by, by men as well. It's fun. The, the engine choice starts conversations, right? So it's a lot of fun. We get to have this conversation and share the story and we get to really connect and, and make change. And so uh, guys come up to you and says, hey, gosh. The BMW engines in there. Why the heck did you put a BMW in there? And then I get to have a big conversation with them about all the rest of it. (laughs) Ah, yeah, very good. Because we can. Exactly. (laughs) Because we figured out it would fit. Kind of, of, sort of, with a lot of great difficulty. And here I am. We're sitting in the cab, and I'm overlooking the engine. you got some cool lights on it to shine it up. It really really looks great. Thank you. So you raised money. I think I saw on your website, you know, over $4,000. We did the Indiegogo. It didn't seem like that's anywhere near. It was nothing. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, compared to what this whole thing We're cost. very grateful for every every penny of donation. Um, but yeah, this was a huge undertaking. And uh, if, when, I should say, I do it again, i definitely going to need to find a format that, that works a little bit better because... This this was a drain for me. <laughs> well, I'm sure. Well, I, I'm sure it was <laughs> not only it, but f- financially, but for your time, your bandwidth, your share, because you're out, you're teaching, you're consulting, yeah. you're doing so many things. And um, are you really running the shop or not? <laughs> I am. Yes. Although I'm not there as as often as I used to be. My team is amazing. I just absolutely love my crew, and they do a great job without me. I find it amazing. You know, you obviously know who my audience is, and you know, p- people sometimes find it difficult. Not to put in 60 hours a week in the shop because yeah. they can't leave. What's the message? I am really grateful to All Girls Garage for this because All Girls Garage forced me to be gone from my shop for a week at a time seven years ago when I first started doing the show. And we weren't ready for it at that point. I was working 80 hours a week and I had to learn. I was forced to learn to put in systems and to trust your people and to to let go of nobody's going to do it the same way you do it or exactly like you would do it but you you paint the picture of the point B that they're trying to get to and then you got to trust your people to get there in their own way I love it 
Are you going to be back with the car at SEMA again next year? I don't think we'll be bringing the truck back to SEMA, although we might uh, if Wait, there's an interest. Did I say car? You said car. I said car. That's okay. Sorry. I call it a car sometimes, too. Sometimes words just don't come out right. It's okay. <laughs> we might if, if somebody wants it in their booth. We'll see. Uh, we're definitely planning on unveiling something in 2019. So we'll do another project, not this year, but next year. Bogey was with me uh, way back in episode 27 here. You know, we're plus 300 and she shared her story uh, of how she got into business. A little bit of uh, background on, on, on the TV show that's in episode 27. She also came back and worked with me in a couple of episodes called uh, that we that were topic technician mentoring and apprenticing and catering to the female customer. And, and then, of course, at Vision last year, episode 202. So if you go to my website and just type in bogey in the search field, mm-hmm. there's, there's four episodes out there. And now this will be the fifth that people can go out and, and listen to uh, on, on the Remarkable Results Radio podcast. So what's next? Not the fact that you're going to go from city to city here over this spring, but what's next for you? I don't know. We're def- developing a lot more projects around bringing women in the trades and reaching out to the youth in general. We've started at the warehouse where we built this truck doing workshops and classes, uh, really low dollar, low, co- low barrier of entry for women to come and try on new things and see if they like them. And with the hopes of uh, you know attracting a couple of people to maybe join our lovely industry. So we've been having a lot of fun with that. I'm really working on building that up and doing more. I've got some crazy dreams. Um, just need to find the, the, the time and the funding to make them all happen. Good but. for you. It's, it's, <laughs> it's so important to have, you know, big dreams, big goals. Yeah. I think in the last seven years, you probably can't even imagine where you are at this current moment. Yeah, if you had told me 10 years ago that this is what my life would look like today, I would have laughed at you. So I don't even pretend to imagine what 10 years from now is going to look like. Uh, I do know that when you dream crazy big and then you go out and you find your peers and your team and um, and your tribe, that really nothing is, is impossible. Amen, sister. Likewise for me, <laughs> three years ago, I would never imagine I'd be sitting in here talking to you. Right. On, honest, honest to God, in following your career. Uh, good stuff. Tell me about Tech Force. I know you're working with them. Yeah. It is such a great organization. I know you've done some stuff in Phoenix, right? Mm-hmm. G- just give us a little highlight as to you know your involvement and how you see Tech Force impacting the industry. Yeah, so Tech Force is an incredible organization. I sit on the board with them and I've been doing some some work with them. They're really on a mission to connect all the dots, not recreate the wheel, but to go into cities and say, okay, there's this program doing this for kids in the trades, and there's this program doing this and this program doing this, but they don't know about each other. They're not supporting one another. And everybody's trying to recreate the wheel. So what Tech Force is really doing is saying, let's all work together. And instead of throwing our own little pebbles at the problem, let's pick up a big boulder and try to make some real big change collectively. They're launching some great videos and content that's designed around rebranding the technician, the image, really getting at influencers, guidance counselors, teachers. Getting kids excited about cars and joining the automotive industry is easy. Getting the parents excited about their kids joining the industry, that's a different challenge. And that's where Tech Force is really uh, directing their energies. And they've teamed up with me on this build. They're our charity of choice on this build and um, promoting what they're doing and uh, bringing that out to the high school students. And Tell me about this special project in a high school. Uh, was it in Phoenix that you went in and yeah. uh, you, you looked at that? And, and, and I think the message, there's a strong message there, what you discovered and what's going on to, to help change that program. So we went in uh, to a high school that had a real struggling auto shop program and Tech Forest Foundation put this all together pulled together donations and got them some new equipment and supplies. And we, we did a makeover of this high school auto shop. And it was a great experience. They had a young, energized new shop teacher who just didn't have the resources and didn't have the support, but wanted to do good and wanted to educate these kids and get them excited. And uh, it was a shame because the, the program had just been run down. It was filthy. It was dingy and dirty and under-equipped. And the message that we were giving kids in that school was if this is the career path you're pursuing, you're, you're kind of second class, right? And that's not the message that we need to be given. Going, pursuing a career in the automotive industry is 
an amazing career choice. Yes, it is. Full of opportunity. And yet we're sticking them in, 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 the, in a dirty, dingy basement class. And so being able to put some fresh life into this shop, I think, really allows the kids to feel pride in what they're doing and feel confident that, that this is a great career path that I'm following and I'm choosing and, and not a, a bad decision. I can see a reality TV show in that. <laughs> huh? I would love to do something I mean, yeah, like that. Think about that. I mean, oh, it, it, think I would about love the, to. The, the technical education today that's failing. It's not there. There aren't many programs that exist in like you discovered. Here's one that's completely um, ten years behind the time. Absolutely. And, and and you guys, it was so so great. Tech Force. Uh, I've interviewed Jennifer Mahar. She's a, amazing, isn't she? She's a times. dynamo. Yeah, and there's there's so many great things coming out. I think they're going to be like you say, the spark plug or the hub, if you will. Mm-hmm. Tech Force hub. Mm, that sounds interesting. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> to help us all out because we've got to get the message out. Now, is it to the middle school? I mean, should we start there? Becky? I think it needs to go middle school too. Absolutely. The younger, the better. And in all honesty, I, we had a couple of eight-year-olds work on this truck. Wait a minute. I saw the video. Yes. Yeah, tell me about that. Oh, my God. Cutest thing ever. We had two eight-year-olds who welded on this truck. And one of them, her mom's a welder. She's been welding since she was five. She's teaching the older girls how to weld. Like She's like, oh, no, you got the angle wrong. You got it right. <laughs> this eight-year-old little adorable thing. And those two girls are growing up thinking that this is all completely normal and completely awesome. And of course they can do anything that they want, right? right? <laughs> and they see it in a totally different light. So the younger, the better, really. I, seeing stuff in, in grade school even, I would love to see. I love your energy, Bogey. Uh, you, it's, it's like an elixir for people. <laughs> and all people have to do is listen and, and, and feel and hear. Oh, you're too kind. Your passion. Thank you. Um, great success on your career and all the great things in front of you on your tour <laughs> of the 57 Chevy Montage with the BMW motor. Yes. And, uh, and to meet a lot of new fans of, of yours. I mean, I was just standing here at the booth, people coming up saying to their son or daughter, hey, listen, we just watched, start watching this TV show just a couple of you know weeks ago, and now they have a chance to meet you. So I think you're having a great impact on our industry. Thank you. And, uh, and go, ladies, go. Yay. Thank you. I appreciate it, and I appreciate your support. Hey, thanks, Bogey, for a great summary of the 57 Chevy Montage all-female build. Great-looking truck, and your team should be proud of the effort, sweat, and tears put into this project. I'm happy that you took the vehicle on the road so your fans and I could see it. Find the show notes for this episode with Bogey at RemarkableResults.biz slash E336. Hey, tell a friend about the industry's premier podcast and share this incredible content library so that all ships rise. Talk soon. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time.